I don't even have a PowerPoint presentation, and usually I do because of the nature of the business that I'm in. This time I didn't get a PowerPoint presentation because the topic of what I'm going to speak about today, that they have given me, my birthplace does not define my identity. This is a topic that lends to me sharing to you about myself, what I've done till now, how I've achieved what I've achieved, and how I continue to strive to do what I do. And I always believed everywhere I go that I strive to achieve to the best of my ability. And that's what I've always tried to do. And th that's how everything for me has come together. There are a few things that I'd like to share with you, which I've followed, which has worked for me till now. The first one is a smile. Whenever I go to Anchor, go to a big show where there are thousands of people, lots of people watching, I first put on half a smile. And moment I put half a smile, you try it yourself, your face, facial muscles relax, you concentrate on your breathing, and then everything comes back. And people like to see you. That's how I guess one of my shows uh, got the highest rating after Ornob because nobody could beat Ornob, you know. He is number one. And still, when he ruled the airwaves, the 8 o'clock show that I used to anchor, News 360, still had a very decent rating. So you need to smile. The second thing I believe in a lot is saying hello to people around you. I do not waste a minute. That's how I've made best of friends, got the biggest stories, by smiling, looking around, knowing the people around you, just being there at that moment, present, no egos, uh, no suspicion about people around you, just throwing all caution to the wind and being there at that moment for that person. That's how you get some of the best stories. You don't know who that person is. For example, I used to cover planning commission at the time when Montek Singh Aluwalia was the chairman of the planning commission. And out of habit, I used to meet people. So we were waiting outside in the corridors of power in Delhi. And there's this guy who's sitting aside and I go to him, I said hello. I just introduced myself and we began talking small chat, tick, 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 chat about Delhi, how terrible it is, about the pollution problem, this and that. It happened to be that that person turned out to be Montek Singh Aluwalia's driver. From that day on, he was my best friend. Whenever I needed a quote, whenever I needed a quick bite, I would call him and say, Saab Khan. While the other journalists would fumble looking for Montek Singh Aluwalia everywhere, I could find him. I learned about the different facets of their life, which made me stronger as a person, which made me imbibe values of a different culture. That really helped me. I was in a college wherein the principal of the college would refuse to acknowledge a presence of a so-called Northeasterner at that time. Because the notion that they had, what this boy is not going to do uh, even fulfill his attendance, not, will not be able to uh, do well in college. Second year, I sat in the principal, Professor Radhakrishnan's room, because his room had the only color computer monitor, and I had to work on the college newsletter. Second year, I became the editor of the college magazine. We revived the college magazine for the next two years. That's because I decided to break away from ghettos and reach out. 
The fourth thing that I practice deeply is to do one thing that scares me every day. Right out of college, I did that, I practiced that. So I went from Bangalore University to Bombay to Xavier Institute of Communication. There were challenges there also. Uh, when I went for my admissions, my brother who used to work in Bombay, his boss told me, you know, Karma, it's very difficult because it's a, uh, one of the most prestigious journalism schools and it's very difficult to get admission. You might not get it there. So that was what was drilled into my brain and I was pretty sad. So here I am walking back from there, from his office, I climbed into a cab. There was a song playing. I lived with that song for the rest of my life. And that song was from one of Shah Rukh Khan's movies. Can you guess? No guesses? Well, the wordings are like, Chan Tare Tor Laun, Sari Dunya Par Mein Chhaun, Bas Itna Sa Khab Hai. That one song suddenly lifted my spirits like crazy. And I suddenly thought I could do it. So from there on, that was, I guess, the tipping point for me to get admission, do well, uh, get hired by Times of India before passing out. And the idea about doing one thing that scared me the most happened at that time. I said, I want to do something that scares me. By that, I don't mean you go jump off a building or do bungee jumping or something like that. By that, I mean doing something that you feel challenged by. So as a journalist, I used to call all random air A-listers in Bombay thinking that I would get an, get an interview. So I would call Monday Amitabh Bachchan, Tuesday I would call Shah Rukh Khan, Thursday, I would call all different kinds of people that thinking that well. But, and as a young journalist, it was scary. And it's not easy calling the chief minister's office and saying, Sir, this is Karma Paljor. I'm not even a reporter. I'm an intern right now at Times of India. And I'd like to get an interview with you. The only person I spoke to was, at that point, Ajit. Agrekar, I think, the cricketer, directly. Apart from that, nobody spoke to me, but I still tried. And this persistence paid off because I did it every single day as a practice. That one thing that I'm fearful of doing, and it made me, it gave me some of the best news stories that I've broken. I would wait all day outside the defense minister's office, be shouted at, be thrown out sometimes, but persisted. I would say, no, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I need an interview. And finally, Pranam Mukherjee did give me an interview, and that was the biggest breaking news that all the top airports in the country, Delhi and Mumbai, were going to be privatized. Nobody had that story. So, believe in that. Do one thing that scares you the most. Aspen, Global Aspen Institute now, that's what I get. I am interacting with people from Africa, I'm interacting with people from Jordan, I'm interacting with people from all around the world. Yes, your roots are there. You're firmly placed back home, you know where you come from. You don't leave that, you don't forget that. You don't forget your soil, you don't forget your mother. But what you also do is to nurture your soul, is to learn something different every now and then. Everybody talks about mentors, having great mentors, that you need mentors in life. 
Yes, you do need mentors in life. But you also need mentors who will impact you in a way. And your mentors can come from anywhere. One of the most impactful persons in my life who taught me the importance of here and now, that right now that I'm speaking to you is important than me thinking about my uncle's funeral, which is tomorrow, is important. I need to be here with you 100%. That was taught by... That was taught by, uh, you know, in Delhi they call themselves Beldas, the guys who carry, uh, when building a house, they carry all the material and all. So I was building my house in Delhi, and there's this guy called Munna, very old. At that time, maybe he would be in the late 60s, but he looked much older because he'd done hard work all the time, and I loved him. And uh, he used to come talk to me every time about life, every evening after work. Uh, he had a reason to come to me because he loved malt and he would not accept anything less than a single. So he would come to me, talk to me every evening about life. And once, you know, he came to me and his shirts would all be tattered and I'd one, once gone to uh, Malaysia and I bought some nice t-shirts and all for him. And next day I know the t-shirt is with cement and all kinds of filth. I said, Munna, what are you doing? You should wear this when you're going out to town, not when you're working. He said, Are Sahab, jab iska band bad jata hai, to ye kaun si baat hai? Ye kahin se bhi aahe, ye to upar se aahe. So such was his impact in my life that I really, after that, have started living in here and now. When I was in Chhattisgarh, uh, in uh, Kanker, a place called Kanker near Jagdalpur, which is Maoist infected. There again, I met a similar soul. Uh, I never got to know his name. I called him How, because whatever I, uh, I used to ask him, he would be answering me with How. So one day we had to cross a river and go towards the other side to see some of the villages which had been affected by uh, the movement, and uh, it was me, my cameraman, and How came. And early in the morning, his breath smelled of a lot of uh, alcohol, so I refused to go that day. Next day he came again, and this guy has nothing. Next day again he came, and we crossed the river that day, and went to the other side, did my reporting, came back. And when I came back, I said, how, how much? He said, how? I showed him 10 bucks, he said, how? I showed him 20, he said, how? I, I, I didn't know how much to give him because that guy had no concept of currency. Because again, he was one of those people who was just living here and now. And I gave him 100 bucks. By the time I wrapped up, reached on top of the uh, river bank, climbed up to take my car, how was nice and happy, lying, he took a look at me and said bye. What about these people? One way you look at the person that I spoke about is that he's a drunkard. The other way to see is the simplicity of life. How we are running after a whole lot of things, and I mean our focus is everywhere, like the earlier speaker talked about. To have a singular focus, you need to learn from the negative, from the positive, from the good, from the evil, evil, sharpen it, take it together, and then practice it. That's what life has been about me. As a journalist reporting, not just in the corridors of power in Delhi, I have reported from most of the areas of natural disasters, be it the floods, to the tsunami, to, to the earthquakes, everywhere. What I've learned mainly 
is to take everything together. But the most important thing, of course, there is to live in the now and report. What mo most journalists do today is they do not reflect what they see. As a journalist, my role is to reflect what I see. Today, what journalists do is they take, take a look at everything, mix it up in a mixy, make what they make of it, and then throw it to the world, much of which is garbage. That's something which I have not done. The other important point that most of us are drilled in our head is about passion, is about hard work. If you want to succeed, you have to be passionate about what you do. If you want to do well, you have to be passionate, you have to love what you do. Yeah. You have to work hard. You have to work 24 hours. For me, it's not worked. It's not really worked. You love what you do. I love what I do. I loved being a broadcast journalist. I loved going out to the field. I loved reporting. But with that love, with that passion, you need instinct. If you don't have instinct, you're not getting anywhere. You work 24 hours. You worked 365 days in a year. You worked four years. You have worked five years. You'll never get it before you because you don't have that instinct. When I interviewed Jeff Bezos, I asked him privately, I said, Jeff, you know, passion, love, hard work, what is it? Can instinct be taught? No. Instinct just comes to you. It's there. It's in your gut. Um, I'm outside. Once there was a big market meltdown, and I was outside uh, P. Chidambaram's office, and all the journalists were there. Instinct tells you that there's no story there. The story somewhere else. Now, if you don't believe in your instinct, gut, and you believe in the mass that is there, you believe in the bear chal that is there, everybody's there, then you'll be stuck there. You need to follow your instinct, what your instinct says. My instinct says, said that the story is not here, it's somewhere else. I left that place. The editor got mad at me. But the story was somewhere else, not there at that time, not at, at least at the finance ministry. And finally, the one thing that I'm practicing now. I left CNN News 18 last year. I could say I was at the peak of my career. Most of my friends now are looking at management jobs. They are becoming managing editors of channels. Uh, I had a few offers from some of the foreign networks, but I chose to come back. I chose to come back to tell the story of the Northeast. I chose to start an online portal, a digital portal, because I believed that this was the next logical step for me. Most people look, it, look at it as a step down. A person who was at the national level, should have gone international. I'm coming back because I see that the eight states need, the stories of these eight states need to be told to the rest of the world. The same ghetto that I left, I'm back. Is it about giving back? I don't know. Is it about the potential that I see? Maybe. But then you come back to give. So East Mojo is something that I've now started to tell stories about the East to India, to the world in a different way.
And that came about because of mindfulness that I've started practicing now, of being at this moment, at this time, being at the place that you are. So from here on, my story is not going to be defined by the awards that I've received yesterday, by the awards that I've, by the stories that I've done yesterday, by all that I've achieved in the last 18 years of my life. What I'll be defined by from here and on is what I've started, is what I now believe in, is my venture. So everyone, I believe, needs to look at that. This is the day, this is the moment, this is the life you leave from here on. Thank you.